And this is our community. I'm Susie Thomas. Welcome today. We are going to be visiting with a couple of good friends. We've got Teresa Fout from the Junior League of Stark County and Terry Hunka from the Martin Center. And uh, both doing amazing things in our community. So, Terry, I want to start with you. First of all, the Martin Center had some really interesting beginnings. How did you get going? How did this come about? Well, first, let me say happy birthday, because um, I'm pretty sure today <laughs> is your birthday, so happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and if I didn't say that, I would get in a lot of trouble, I'm sure. Um, but the Martin Center, you know, when we left the air, um, gosh, I don't know when it was, but um, we I started going down to Peru, uh, founded Child Reach Ministries, we went to Peru, we um, got very involved there building um, some orphanages and stuff like that. Um, and Ecuador and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But while we were doing that, probably part of that time, probably the last half, um, the Lord was really working on me saying, what about the kids in your own backyard? And mm-hmm. as you know, I'm from here. So I'm like, well, the kids in my backyard don't need any help. They, you know, there's others around the world that need help. And my son was a youth director at a church in downtown Canton. And he asked me a few times, my wife and I, Brenda, if we could get involved and help him pass out hot dogs and do all this kind of stuff. And so I started to see poverty and for what it was in uh, Canton. And, you know, the striking thing was poverty is the same in Canton as it is in Lima, Peru, as mm. it is in Quito, Ecuador, as it is in, in Nairobi, Kenya. You know, it's it's a mindset as much as anything. We have all these programs that, in my opinion, enable, in a lot of cases, people and stuff, but there's still there that one segment of population that's just hurting, and they don't know how to get out of, how to break that cycle. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we started working with the youth and everything, and, and it's always been our belief at Child Reach that if we're going to be involved in, in ministry in a certain area with a certain people group, it's best to be um, bought in, so to speak. So through a, a number of God circumstances, because they certainly were, we um, were able to secure a three-story old elementary school building in downtown Canton for a dollar. Yeah. That's incredible. How? I mean, how, how did that become available and why a dollar? <laughs> well, because there has to be something exchanged. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so, But the process was the superintendent then of Kansas City Schools said, I think you know, we have an old building and that would, that would fit your needs. So we were in a, went around the, the town and we looked at all the buildings and the one right in where we wanted to be wasn't tagged, which means gang writing on the, on the right. walls, uh, didn't have any broken windows. You know, I mean, it was just like it was, God was just preserving it for wow. us, you know. So we said, well, I think that one would work great for us. And she said, I think I can get that for you for a dollar. And I'm like, well, that happens to other people, I've heard, (laughs) you know, but that doesn't happen to us. And um, sure enough, it's happened one other time in Canton's history that a piece of property was was, uh, sold to a nonprofit for a dollar, and that was for a park. Mm. So we felt pretty privileged that yeah. uh, that we had this this thing. So, but it's a long process. I mean, it's a thing where the school system has to trade it to the city. So they traded it to the city for a piece of property, and then um, then the city then can deed it to us for a dollar. And so that, that we had to go to council amazing. meetings, and I mean it was yeah. a, it's a big long story, way more than we have time for here, but it worked. Yeah. Um, and God just paved the way. So the things taking place inside this building that you bought for a dollar yeah. have had some already amazing ripple effects in the community. First of all, talk about what kind of services. Your vision was to bring a lot of different kinds of services all under one roof. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah. I'm, our vision was to have a lot of activities for to attract kids and stuff. Plus, you know, we could rent out you know, different different rooms in there, fix them up for offices and stuff like that so that um, we could help under undercut some of our bottom line. You mm-hmm. know, it would help offset some of that bottom line. So we do. We have like-minded ministries that have offices in there, and I know you're going to talk to Jill from Powell Mission and, mm-hmm. you know, some of the others. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Child and Adolescent Services, which do um, a tremendous work. They're a counseling service. Cool 
project, mm-hmm. uh, which does community renovations and, and uh, just are doing wonderful things at Maslin for the last couple of years. And, you know, just like-minded ministries mm-hmm. and organizations so that we could almost be a full service. You know, we could bring bring a kid in and we could play games and show him all that stuff and more demonstrate who Jesus is more than just tell him about Jesus, yeah. which we found is way more effective. And then, you know, have if, if somebody needed some counseling service or, you know, something like that, we, oh, just go upstairs, yeah. you know, and it, it worked out pretty well. It, it really did. We have some pretty good ministries partnering with us. And one of those is, uh, naturally. is Junior League of Stark County, which... Yeah. All right, Teresa Fout joins us. You're this year's president. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, uh, so happy to have you. And uh, I think some folks might have a misperception on exactly what the Junior League is and what they do. Um, tell us a little bit, first of all, about Junior League. Some people might not have ever heard of the Junior League before. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit, who who's the Junior League? And then who's the Junior League today? So the Junior League is a group of women who volunteer in the community. And our mission is to promote volunteerism and to develop the potential of women and to improve communities with uh, those volunteers. So that's what we do. But it's a group of like-minded women, um, all ages, all backgrounds, who come together, who are interested in getting to know one another, learning more about helping the community, and then learning about leadership as well. And so that's what the Junior League does. I think um, we have a proud history in Stark County. Uh, We've been here a long time. The first organization was called the Junior Service League in 1915. And then that turned into the Junior League of Canton. Mm -hmm. And now we're the Junior League of Stark County. So we've been here a long time um, doing a lot of good work with a lot of community partners. But I think... um, You know, we have some incredible community members who have been members over the years, and they're now sustaining members, and they're so connected in the community. And um, I think maybe the perception that some people might have of Junior League is that maybe we're uh, detached, and one of the jokes is like we wear pearls and white gloves and things like that, and I haven't seen any pearls. I haven't seen any white (laughs) gloves at any meetings, Um, but I have seen a lot of women who care. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women who work hard and um, they juggle so much in their lives and they still want to volunteer and make a difference. And so that's what Junior League is to me. Um, And that's why I just love it and I enjoy it so much. And, you know, um, you make time for it even though we're busy, you know, and, and we all work in our homes or, or in offices and, um, and just many of us volunteer in several different uh, organizations. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that's, that's what the Junior League is to me. And, and we're very excited to be partnering with the Martin Center uh, in a three-year project. One of the things that Terry mentioned was the Child and Adolescent Service Center, um, which I know was begun by the Junior League, um, some folks might be very surprised as to uh, what programs, Guardian Ad Litem comes to mind, some others that are now just pillars in the community, things that you just count on in the community, all began as projects with the Junior League and then were turned over to another agency to take it from there and run with it once it just got legs um, by the Junior League getting it started. I know you're involved with some other projects um, more recently over the years. Before we get into what's all going on with the partnership with the Martin Center, tell us a little bit about some of the things the Junior League's been involved with. So, you know, one of the things that I just feel so privileged to do is to learn about and partner with so many wonderful community organizations. And so we've worked with Habitat for Humanity. We um, were part of the first All Women Build in Stark County in uh, 2006. We've worked with Hammer and Nails. Uh, We worked with the Stark County Hunger Task Force, putting together a senior pantry. We were putting together um, meals for seniors um, who were not able to to get food otherwise. Uh, We worked with a backpack program there. We worked with Pathway Caring for Children, put on a prom for those kids who many of them went to alternative uh, high schools and they 
said, you know, we don't get to go to prom. Could you could you do that for us? And so we did. And we also had life skills classes and things like that for them. Uh, we worked with Alliance for Families up in Alliance, uh, making tie blankets for the kids. That's a shelter uh, for families um, who are temporarily homeless. And so we worked with the kids and the families, giving them a fun movie night, things like that. We've been there a few times. Boys and Girls Club of Maslin, we had a Be Great Graduate program where we worked with kids uh, monthly and we taught them some life skills, resume writing, interview skills, things like that. Um, we worked with Pegasus Farm, building an adaptive writing course uh, a few years back. So, you know, we just, we're just so grateful to partner with so many wonderful organizations and it just gives us a chance to really create an impact and I think we're sort of a behind the scenes organization I think we really do a lot um, quietly I think in the community so Mm -hmm. very interested in how the two of you got together met you shared somehow your vision with Teresa. <laughs> you kind of caught that vision, took it back to this amazing organization. And, and it's really the partnering of, of two really very different and, but very impactful <laughs> groups. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how did this all come about? Well, I mean, I got this phone call. And, you know, you can take it from there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I think it was at the Stark County Fair last year, actually, 2014. That's right. That you guys had a booth. Mm -hmm. And um, we met with Mark, Mark, who was at the booth there. And he told me about the Martin Center and I'd heard about it. And so I called you up and wanted to check it out. Yeah, so she came down to the Martin Center and I showed her around and um, we said, gee, what are the possibilities? You know, what what are the things we can do together? Because she bought into our vision right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it didn't take much selling, uh, so to speak. Um, you know, I mean, she was on board right away, and she goes, "What can we do? You know, to partner with you and stuff." And so we just started dreaming, and I think that first. Uh, meeting that was supposed to be a half an hour ended up being three or four hours yeah. and uh you know we just started dreaming at the possibilities and it was like wow and so she, I, I you can speak to this Teresa, but she went back and just kind of funneled all that information down to what well, we could do this we could do that and hey how about this and you know, you go ahead and tell that, but then I'm going to tell something about you guys planting the garden this year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. It's, and you know what? I think it's so interesting because sometimes, uh, what was the reaction? Sometimes people hear, we're going to get together with this great organization. Where are they located? They're located on um, 3rd Street, Third Street Southeast, Southeast yeah. in Canton. Yeah. Um, any eyebrows raised? Anybody feel any concern about that when you brought this idea to them? Oh, sure. I mean, there's definitely, you know, people asked, you know, can we bring our kids? Is that a good idea? That sort of thing. I mean, but the Junior League has been very interested. The membership has been very interested in doing something big. And they've been talking about that for a couple of years. And so when Terry and I had that conversation, I thought, this could really fit the bill. And so I talked to members, and there are other members who had heard of the Martin Center and who had been there before. And so we definitely wanted to get involved. And we are going to find out more about what happened uh, once these two organizations got together after a few words from our sponsors. Stay with us. <laughs> 